Let's get started using the CAD API. We're going to have a quick look through how we make our first request, how we get the images URL so we can actually load them in our interesting web apps, how we can get the different breed information so we can make something funky, uh, and how we can authenticate our requests so we can access to the full range of features. On the CADAPI.com, I'm going to assume that you've signed up for a free account with that email sent to your inbox that'll contain your API key. Now let's open the documentation and find out what we can do with it. We're going to make a request to pull a random image. That means we will use the images search endpoint on its own and we can expect to get one or more images using this endpoint, each with a URL, width, height and breed information where possible and where we've authenticated the request. Uh, we can see there's different other query parameters we can add, limit the amount of images we want to return, page and order for paginating through them all. Does it have the breed information attached to it, if we want to filter to only show different kinds of breeds, categories, etc. So let's take this URL for getting one random cat image and open it in our browser. As you can see, we've got a random cat image URL. Let's open that and see what pretty kitty is waiting for us. Oh, it's a cat in space. Now, if we use one of these parameters we saw earlier, the limit, we can return more than one at a time because you can see this is an array and it has one item in that array. Let's change the limit to five. We should now expect five images. If we change that limit to 11, we'll actually only get 10. And that's the maximum you can get at any one time without using your API key. So I'm going to go back to the welcome email I received from signing up myself. I'm going to copy my unique API key, which I'll deactivate after this video. So you can just use your own. And I'm going to look in the documentation and see how we authenticate our request to the API. There's two ways to do it. We can either do it in the header. We'll save that for when we're writing code, or we can add it as a query parameter called API underscore key. Let's use that approach. So I'm going to add that query parameter, API underscore key, and I'm going to paste in my unique key. And we should now receive 11 images. You can also see we've got more data as well. We've actually got the breed information. So where an image has been analyzed and found to contain one or more cat breeds, then those breed uh, JSON objects will be attached to that image by default. You can see it's an array, and in this case, we've got one element of that array, meaning there's one breed in the image. Let's open this uh, image up, and we should be able to see a cypress cat. There it is. Beautiful. We can see we've got description, Wikipedia URL, some attributes, some temperaments, lots of information about the breed that you can make really interesting apps for. So, that is only available when you use an API key, as are the other query parameters, such as category ID, so if we want to filter by category ID, or filter by breed ID, or if we want to return images in a ascending or descending order. Let's next look at how we filter the images returned by breed ID. So if we go back to our documentation, we can see if we want to filter by breed ID, we need to include the breed ID um, on this query parameter called breed IDs. So first of all, we need to get the unique ID for each breed to know um, what we should append there. So there's an endpoint that lists all the breeds available in the CAD API. Let's open that now. As you can see, each breed has a name, a unique ID, and various other attributes, description, temperament, all these interesting things that you can make some great apps for. You know, you imagine making something for a, for a vet studio or for a cat sitting or for, you know, choose what cat's right for your apartment kind of thing, for your lifestyle, whatever that might be. You could use all of these fields for doing interesting things like that. But for our use case, we just want to filter the images returned by a given breed. So let's find um, what at random, let's find a Bengal. So we'll get the ID, which is B-E-N-G. 
and on the endpoint we were using earlier to return our images with our API key, we'll append a new breed IDs query parameter and I'll paste in there the string bang. Now each of these images should now be returned with a breed object and if we open this first image it should be a Bengal. Yes it is. Uh, that is extremely useful for making an app where you want to filter the images that are shown so only the images of a certain breed are returned. So if we look in the code samples we can see such a, an example here. The JavaScript code makes a request to get all the breeds. Um, it passes the demo API key, which you would replace. It then loops through all of those breeds and it gets out the ID of the image to reference. So each breed has its own um, image ID inside of it, which is the reference image ID. And that's the image that we've chosen that best fits that breed. So each breed has one. And if we look inside of the breeds object by going to the API documentation and looking at the API reference, uh, if Postman was up, we'd be able to do that. But as it's not, let's um, look at the filter by breeds and list that breeds endpoint again. We can see in here, we've got a, an image object um, inside the breed. And this is the ID and the URL of the breed uh, image that we looked at earlier that's used as the reference. Beautiful. Now, another interesting endpoint is that whenever an image is uploaded, it's automatically um, categorized by either AWS recognition, GCP um, vision, or our own models to classify all the things that are inside it just to make sure that it's actually a cat, you know, it's safe for work, doesn't have any people in it, all those kind of things. So we, I make that information available publicly for every image. So if we get this image ID, let's get um, the ID of this image. And if we look at the endpoint, let's find the one with the API key we're using. So if we do images slash that ID, this will then give us just that image and all the information about it. So we can see the breeds that are in it, the URL, the ID, the width and height. Now, if we do a slash analysis on this image, we can see the results of that analysis that we looked at earlier. As we could see this time, this image was run through AWS recognition and it, um, was that service came back that it was 99.99% um, Abyssinian. It was a cat, pet, mammal, animal, uh, Manx. It kind of thought it was a bit of a Manx. Obviously, it's not, but you can see how this confidence ranking works. Now, this scheme is slightly different for each uh, vendor, for both our own and GCP. But if you wanted to build your own image analysis engine on, you've got all the data for every single image on the platform available to do so. Uh, that's enough for now, but feel free to get in touch if you want some more information about the CAD API, want some interesting ideas, join our Discord channel where we often put up free code samples and we'll answer any code questions you have and just help you, you know, get your project through to completion. 